Welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast, where we take you inside our gym, CrossFit Palm Beach, each week. It's here that we are creating new superhumans every day, transforming people's lives, helping them reach a level of health they never knew possible. We strive to answer your most burning questions on fitness, health, nutrition, training, motivation, mindset, lifestyle, and more. If you have a question, please email us at info at CrossFitPalmBeach.com. You can also learn more on our blog, livingsuperhuman.com. And if you have a moment, we'd love a review from you on iTunes. All right, it's time. Let's stop being average and start living superhuman. Welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast. My name is Andrew Frezza, and today I'm joined by Tony Frezza, Melissa Dixon, and Austin Bittigrew. And today we're going to be talking about the new and improved 2019 CFPB Open. So we wanted to kick it off and just uh, talk a little bit about what is the Open first and foremost for those of you guys that are fairly new to it, and also talk about the changes to this year's Open because it will be different both worldwide what the games is doing and also in-house what we're doing and then we want to talk about the main thing we want to focus on towards the end of this podcast is talking about the big changes to this year's in-house open the one and done rule and some of the adjustments we're going to be making to the teams who are the new teams who can you hope to get drafted by and all that good stuff so first and foremost what is the open basically the crossfit open started in uh 20 11 2011 <laughs> fact check um 2011 and it's a five-week competition that crossfitters from all around the world can participate in okay so we've participated in the gym in it since we've been open um, we missed 2012 but in 2013 we started as a gym participating in it last year we had over 130 of our athletes participate in the crossfit open it is for crossfitters i would not recommend beach fitters doing it because the movements are going to be mainly crossfit type movements Um, But every Thursday, we get a new workout, a workout's released, and then we have until the following Monday to complete that workout and submit it online and see where we stack up against hundreds of thousands of CrossFitters from around the world. So it's a really cool global competition, and it's a a really cool community builder, both in-house and around the the CrossFit community worldwide. So we want to just kind of kick it off with why we love the open and why we get so excited for it and even with some of the changes this year we're even more excited for what's coming this year so i don't know who wants to kick it off what what uh why do you guys love the open what gets us so excited for it um i'll start uh to to uh the point of that it's a five-week test and you get to see yourself uh compared to everyone in the world it's also a test of who makes the games and we're unique and like this sport is the only sport that does that Like, you can't just go up against, like, other football players to make, you know, a pro roster or anything. Like, we get to go basically head-to-head, in a sense, with the best of our sport. And that's really cool uh, that we get that opportunity uh, this time of year. Yeah, I think a lot of us know we're not going to be anywhere near them, but it's kind of (laughs) cool. Not even close. It's cool to see how far away you really are. And it gives you perspective. It gives you more perspective about what they do. I know, like an example outsider sport with like gymnastics i have much more respect for the olympics now because we do some elements of what they do very small elements what they do but it's very cool in that sense it gives you more respect for it and it's cool to see where you compare Uh, what about you guys what's some of the reasons you guys love doing the open Uh, i think my favorite reason is just for overall progression and being able to see the progression through the years so um, an example i have has actually just happened recently i remember in 2012 was my first open and I think it was open workout 12.3, which we actually just repeated in class the other day. I remember it being the most frustrating day in the gym in a long time because I could barely push press the 115 barbell. So I think I really only got maybe one or two rounds through that workout. And then we just repeated it last week. And I think I'm getting 10 or something like that. But seeing the progression through the years, and even though maybe in that one moment it frustrates you to see where you are, it's an easy way to look back and see how far you guys have really come in that, in that journey. Yeah, I really like, we, we find ourselves encouraging people to sign up for the Open before they even 
know what it is really because mm-hmm. of that. Because once they do it, they benchmark it, and then it, they get to look forward to future opens or when we retest stuff in class. It's really cool. What about you, Mel? Uh, I started my CrossFit journey one month before the open. So like I did all of the open workouts, but I was one of those people who were really reluctant to sign up because I was like, man, I'm brand new. I don't even know how to snatch. Why would I do this? And my second year, my very first open that I signed up for, I was so bummed that I didn't have those scores to look back on when we retested. And, and I just, I, I had the scores in my little journal because I wrote everything down, but like Austin's saying, the progression is so cool and it's so neat to see how much you can change in one year. Um, so I, I really do enjoy that. And I have every year since then signed up for the open. And I, I really like just the energy in the gym. It's, it's a different vibe. The whole five weeks is just totally different. The atmosphere, people cheering each other on, um, people really buy into these workouts and I think what I like the most is that people really judge themselves honestly when they don't normally in the gym on the day to day mm-hmm. there there's the element of judging each other and and having a no rep and having someone watching all of your reps especially when you can't count to 30 like me some <laughs> someone counts for you which is really nice um, but when when there's that attention to detail and that attention to movement we all get better we all do perfect reps and we all hold ourselves to higher standards which is really cool yeah I love just uh, the adrenaline you get in the gym. And and my favorite part about the Open is those first moments, the first pull-ups, the first toes-to-bar, the first muscle-ups. We've had so many of those over the years. And it's it's it happens in that environment because of the adrenaline, because people are trying stuff they don't, wouldn't normally try in a normal class setting. So it's really cool that when the stakes are at their highest, people kind of step up to the plate and, and do more than they ever thought were possible. So I really love that aspect of it and I'm looking forward to to more of those this year um, you can already see people like uh, working towards those things you know so that's what's cool about this time before the open is like people are like starting to do the extra work more and just kind of like you said more attention to detail and like tightening up uh, just everything and I feel like like for me like the five weeks of the open it's like accelerated learning you know you learn so much more about yourself you just work that much more harder and get so much more out of like those five weeks because you're just just tightening everything up and it lingers too it's not just those five weeks then you see people like who hey i picked up this heavier dumbbell Mm -hmm. now i'm going to continue to use this dumbbell throughout the next year or they think about it throughout the year of like well i remember the open weight was this and like i still want to keep myself at this kind of standard so Mm -hmm. you know they, they it always gives them like a reference point of where to go through throughout the year to not like just fall back on, on yeah. certain skills. Or if they're forced to do toes to bar, yeah. right? And they've always done knees to chest. They make that jump yeah, and, and keep it. And then they start making that jump in class afterward mm-hmm. too. Of Like, well, I do have a couple because I got them in the open. So now I can try a couple more and do, they're not just limiting themselves mentally mm-hmm. as much. Cool. So for those of you guys that are new to the open, there's really two separate opens and we want to kind of clarify this so you guys aren't confused by it. There is the worldwide open and that's what we always used to do in our gym up until a few years ago. And then we've layered on since then in the last couple of years, our in-house CrossFit Palm Beach intramural open to go along with the main games open. And this is just specific to us. There's other gyms that do stuff that's similar to this but this is our in-house open. So um, we're gonna be talking about the differences between the two. Um, But uh, the first thing we wanna cover was just really the CrossFit game season and how that's gonna be different this year. A lot of people are are disappointed by the changes, people that follow the main CrossFit game season. Um, There are things that are certainly disappointed, like no more regionals, especially when it was in our backyard and we were able to go watch it last year and support Whitney and Zach competing in it. But there's also some exciting things about it as well. I mean, for the main CrossFit Games athletes, now there's no longer stages and a lot of them can qualify straight from the Open directly to the CrossFit Games. So in some ways, the Open now becomes even more exciting because now there's not that extra layer of regionals. We can go directly to the Games. And what's been what's replaced regionals has now become these individualized sanctional, sanctional events like Wadapalooza and there's competitions all around the world, Australia, um, Dubai, and athletes can go and qualify there. And I think one of the big things to point out is that team 
competition has changed dramatically. So it used to be where you could qualify a team to the games through the open or at least qualify for regionals. Now the only way to get a team into regionals or the games is to win one of these sanctional events. And I think that changes some things because we I know we had in the past hopes of qualifying teams for regionals. That's how Zach got into the games last year was going on a team through regionals in the games. So is there anything that you guys stands out to you, anything I missed or anything that you're particularly excited for about this year's game season? Um, it's going to be sad if uh, they don't do the same like open announcements. I really look forward to those. Those are really fun, how much time and effort they put into those. Um, I know all of our members like tuned in 8 p.m. Thursday. Um, you got to see um, in this last year, they actually put like, average people next to like your competitors and that was really cool because it was like though no, i'm gonna go somewhere in between <laughs> right? like somewhere in the middle i'll end up um but that was really cool just to like see the best of the world do it see some average people do it um and just get the excitement started for the weekend so uh from what we've heard they're not going to do it as mm -hmm. as big as they as they've done in the past but hopefully they'll still like keep that excitement going i thought uh just coming back from Wadapalooza, it's so exciting to see how big the sanctional events are turning into, though. It's like, mm -hmm. you're just walking down and you're passing games athletes every which way, so I thought that was really exciting. I know you still see that at regionals sometimes, but now it's just on a much bigger scale with a lot more money involved. I know Dubai had a $30,000 event, not just the whole competition. Like, one event was worth $30,000, so the stakes are definitely raised, so that definitely brings some excitement to those individual sanctionals yeah cool so let's uh let's talk a little bit about our in-house open and what it is how it's going to be different this year so we're going to have five teams we'll get to the teams in a second but we're going to draft everybody onto one of five teams um, everybody needs to sign up by february 5th so not a lot of time from the time you guys are going to be hearing this tuesday february 5th is going to be the last day we're going to do our draft on wednesday afternoon february 6th and we'll be ordering the team jerseys on that Thursday or Friday to getting those in. And some of the big changes this year is moving to the one and done rule. Okay, so for our in-house scoring only, and this is different from the game's website. This is one of the big differences. Only your first score, only your first attempt at the workout is going to count towards the intramural team score. Okay, and we're going to use Sugar Wad. So if you haven't gotten on Sugar Wad, get on it. We're gonna use SugarWad as our leaderboard and our coaches and each other will police each other to make sure it is in fact your first attempt being entered into SugarWad. And if you redo the workout, that's fine. You're able to do that, but it still will only be your first score into SugarWad. So I wanted to use this podcast to talk about really why we're excited about this, how we think it's gonna actually make this a way more fun and exciting open and just a better five week experience across the board. So what do you guys think? What are you excited for with one and done? Uh, I think it's gonna be more exciting for our Friday night bar fights. I think that's what I'm looking forward to most is people really knowing that's their one score that's gonna help their team, whether or not they do it again to help their CrossFit.com score, whatever. But this is the one score that they can really give it all to and there's no repeats in their in their head. I This one's near and dear to my heart because every year, there's people in the gym who are just like beating themselves up over like a one rep of something like we never on a Tuesday leave a workout and, and mull for hours afterwards going I can't believe I didn't get that one more rep because it's a Tuesday workout this is really no different we're not trying to breed people who are that competitive because 95% of the people that we know and work out with aren't trying to go even more than 95%, like a hundred percent of us aren't trying to go to the games. We're not trying to like get better in the region by killing ourselves. So we are trying to put up our best attempt and preserve our health and promote the best health of all the athletes in the gym. So, you know, th this rule really frees it up for everybody to just say, okay, I'm going to give my best effort, come in with my best game plan. And that's what it is. And if I can be one rep better and it's really that important to me, then I'll really go for it. But if it's really not that important, it, it helps us evaluate that. Like, what am I even doing this second attempt for? And is it worth the health of my shoulder or the health yeah. of my knee or 
not pushing people too far. Yeah, building on that, I think it just brings back the roots of CrossFit. Like, when CrossFit first started, it was like, you should be fit anywhere, anytime, and this literally proves it. Like, you have one time to do it and do it the best you can, and then in next year, if we have to repeat it, you can see the progression you made, but it just gives you that one shot where you're not, like, mulling over it, like Melissa was saying. Over the weekend, you just get it off. It's just another Friday workout, and you're done. Move on. Yeah, it's 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 so much like other sports. I mean, or even CrossFit in the game setting or a local competition setting. You get one shot out of it, you give it your best, and you move on. I think it makes it so much easier to know that. And, yes, people could – flip it on its head and say, well, I only get one shot at it. Now there's even more stress, but it's really about taking away the focus from the end result and putting it on the effort. And once you do that, a lot of that stress clears away. And this is something that I experimented with last year, which was why I'm so excited about this is because I did one and done last year, hundred percent. And in the past, I think I redid every single CrossFit games or open workout. So I completely flipped it on its head last year and it was so much more enjoyable for me. I got five weekends of my life back where I actually enjoyed the weekend. And what was cool about this last year and something that I encourage everybody to do is one of the things that I always see is that people do the workout on Friday at some point. They're very proud of the effort for one or two or three hours after. Then they start the comparison thing. They start checking the leaderboard and then they're no longer proud of the effort they were just proud about. And those feelings are still gonna creep up because I dealt with them last year. They're still gonna start to compare, but it makes it so much easier to kind of put those feelings away and just move on and be proud of that effort and say like, no, I'm good, I'm moving on, I'm, I'm happy with this, and I'm gonna enjoy this weekend and be excited for the next week and, and kind of close one chapter and move on to the next. That's a good like mental challenge for someone. Like when you're gonna log your score on SugarWad, don't look at anybody else's score. Just put your score in and say like if you're happy with it or you're not in your internal self. And then if you look at the leaderboard and it deflates you, then you realize what's deflating you. It's mm-hmm. not your mm-hmm. actual effort. It's it's you're you're comparing yourself to other people. Like yeah. So you can figure out which one of those camps you are. Are you the one who's proud of yourself or are you the one who's you know, getting deflated by the comparisons because I do that all the time. I look at the leaderboard and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, talking about things that carry over from the five weeks, that's one of the things, mm-hmm. right? Is like you learn to deal with like being happy with effort rather than scoreboard and you, you learn it. And, and like you said, it might be a little bit hard in these five weeks to just deal with it, but like it's going to carry over to where in the future you're going to like actually be more happy with your scores in general. You know, and be more happy for others and get more fist bumps. And <laughs> Yeah, and w- one of the reasons we're doing this is to, we, we do kind of want to cut down on the retests, right? We, we're encouraging one and done, not just from the scoring perspective, but we do want to cut down on the retests. I mean, do you guys think of any examples where you would encourage someone to retest the workout, um, where you think it is appropriate, or for someone who's done it every year and they're like, just kind of set on it, like, who is the appropriate person if there is someone out there or is it just like 100% across the board everyone should be one and done this year I would I would almost say 100% across the board everyone should be one and done I really the only example I could think of is someone like Whitney like who has a potential to make it somewhere beyond um, that that's really the only place I could say that, yeah she maybe she should redo it to jump up a couple of spots because her couple of spots are a little bit different than our couple of spots but yeah. besides that it's like last year like I just I was watching people repeat that deadlift workout over and over, and I'm like, the amount of volume that you're putting on your back, like you wouldn't come to the gym if we programmed deadlift three days in a row, but yet you're yeah. making yourself deadlift three days in a row. So I would say 100%. No, there's not. Yeah, we've kind of slightly put in the injury thing, and I it's something that I think needs to be focused on more is that it really is a, a big risk to repeating workouts because the 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 way we're pushing ourselves, the number of repetitions we're doing of a of the exact same movement pattern of like, whether it be your back for deadlifts or in that same workout, the volume you're putting on your spine of handstand pushups. And we, we do a better job of controlling that risk in terms of the rep schemes we use, the volume of workouts we use in a normal class setting, normal week setting. And it's just to repeat that back to back in two or three days, it's just, it's usually not a smart thing to do. 
Yeah, I, I, I think it's really good how Austin's relating it to, like, your goals of, like, okay, if you think you have a shot of making it to not regionals anymore but the games, then, yeah, if you're one of those people who are on the, on the bubble or on the cusp. But for, like, I've retested one workout in my whole open career mm-hmm. of my, you know, mm-hmm. I'm in the 1600, so I'm kind of a <laughs> big deal. Um, it, I retested one, and I was actually deflated when I did retest it because I did put all my 100% effort into the first workout, and I thought I had a bad plan, so I, I got in my head of, like, you know, I really came out way too hot. There's a way that I could get this. I was on the verge of having chest bar and I was getting them. So I'm like, I just developed this new skill and you can talk yourself into, I am that person who should retest it because I have this, this, and this, you know, these reasons. And really when I retested it, because I had put my hundred percent effort into that Friday, that Sunday when I retested it, it probably was the better plan of attack and it probably was the way I should have done it the first time, but I still couldn't get one more rep because I was spent because yeah. I didn't spend enough time recovering. I spent most of the time mental in mental anguish over this stupid rep. And then, you know, we, we never ask someone to put forth a hundred percent. And then two days later, another hundred percent, there's no way you can recover in that time. So, there's really no reason for it. There's really no justification, no matter how many things your brain can come up with. There's really no good reason. Yeah. There's also an advantage to getting reset for the next workout coming up. Yeah. You know, so like when fr- when Saturday morning hits and you've already done it Friday night, it's not just lingering in your head. Like, do I do it again? Do I don't? Like, you've already like changed your mind to say like, all right, we haven't seen double unders yet. I think it's coming. I'm going to take this Saturday morning to work on some double unders. Yeah. You know, like uh, Katrin talks about it when that year she uh, didn't make the games because of the rope climb thing at regionals. And she said, like, when everyone was dying because they were at the games, like, she was fresh, you know. So she felt like she had a head start on everyone for next year, and she won, right? She won two years in a row after that because she took that head start and ran with it. And I think that's, like, what we could do this year. Like, yeah. Saturday morning hits, get that head start on the next week. You know, keep working on those skills and whatever you think might be coming. Yeah, and if you're retesting Sunday or Monday, then you're expending the energy you could be storing for the next Friday is 100%. Definitely. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're not going to keep anybody from retesting workouts. If you really want to retest, you do have to communicate with a coach. You do have to get a coach's approval. Um, and we do want a legitimate reason why you want to retest and, and kind of your approach to the open as a whole. So you will be allowed to retest, but one of the big changes to this year is that we really want the class experience on Saturday and Sunday and Monday to get the, the respect it deserves. And that's really a big change is, you know, I think a lot of the members, whether they were participating in the open and not retesting or they weren't part of the open at all, felt like the class experience took a hit for five weeks. And we don't want that to happen. We want it to be really fun on Friday. Yes, Friday doesn't feel like a normal class. It feels different, but we don't want four days of that. So if you are gonna retest, you're gonna have to do it during open gym. Um, We'll have some extended open gym hours on Saturday. We already have open gym on Sunday, but we'll extend those hours. And then Monday, it would have to be done outside of class times during the middle of the day, okay? So whether you miss the workout on Friday or you're retesting the workout, you have to do open gym after Friday. And we want everyone to be really respectful of that and get that coach's approval each time. Um, Another thing that we're gonna do, and this is to Tony's point about closing that chapter and starting to focus on the next week, is that our submission deadline for our sugar wad scores and our in-house open is gonna be Sunday night at midnight. So you're gonna have to get your score into SugarWad. Most of you guys are good about doing it that day, which is easy. You have it on your phone already. It's not as, as uh, you know, difficult as going onto the game's website and you know, hoping it doesn't crash on you. But get it in by Sunday night, so that way on Monday we can get you all the results from the previous week, let you know who's team won, what the awards are from Friday night bar fights, and all that good stuff. We're gonna be closing the chapter as a gym on Sunday night. So that way, Monday, we're going into that next week fresh, and we're not even really thinking about that previous week's open workout. So that's going to be a big change this year. Um, anything else I uh, missed on that? Oh, 
God. Yeah, I think uh, another point would be if you do plan to retest and you're doing it in the open gym time, which is bring a buddy with you so they can uh, help judge for you and you can judge for them, vice versa. Um, that way you guys can get it done on your own time um, and try to leave the coaches, let them coach um, or any of the other people who are just in there working out too. So, Yeah, that's true for really any any time, whether it's or any uh, retest or test outside of Friday is that we want you guys to help judge someone and that way you're contributing to it because it becomes a big weight on the coaches and us as owners to have to judge people. So the more that you can come in prepared and judge someone else, it's gonna make a huge difference outside of that Friday class time. And then limiting your retest to open gym hours only to make sure we're not interfering with those classes. Yep. All right, so let's talk about the teams. Let's reveal this year's <laughs> teams. Dun, dun, dun. So, teams for this year. Black Mambas is me and Austin. Woo! <laughs> I can't see my thumbs down on the microphone. The Red Bulls is going to be Tony and Arlen. The Turquoise Turtles is Melissa and Robbie. Yeah, baby. The Blue Lions is Haley and Zach. And then To Be Determined is Whitney <laughs> and Danielle. They're picking between two names. So... That just tells you what kind of leadership you have. <laughs> you think about They're but, not here to defend themselves. <laughs> we'll be doing our draft on Wednesday, February 6th. So we want everybody signed up again by Tuesday, February 5th. It's not going to be a lot of time from when this podcast is released. So get signed up if you not if you are not signed up already. You probably can get signed up late, but you're going to miss out on the team jersey because we're ordering those the day after the draft. So the way the jersey works is that you guys have given us your size, you've agreed um, to the sign up fee, which is $30 for the entire intramural open, and you'll get the jersey color based on the team that you're drafted to. So on Thursday or Friday, the seventh or eighth, you're gonna know your team, you're gonna know your team color, and you'll have your jersey on the way. And hopefully we'll have that in by the second week of the open First week will kind of be on our own because the, the turnaround won't be that quick, but we should have all those jerseys in by the second week of the Open. So let's talk about scoring. Let's talk about um, how we can, how we're going to do the points for this year. I don't know if you guys have anything else on the teams, if you need to, you know, give, promote your team or anything, if you have a slogan or anything, but let's talk about scoring. <laughs> If you like wearing red, if you look good in red. If you like winning the Black Mamas. <laughs> They're going to make you slither into the gym, so you don't want to be on their team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so scoring. So we talked about the scoring submissions through SugarWad. And in the past, it's our competition has been very performance-based. It was, how did you do in the workout? That's going to have the greatest effect on your team score. That still will be the case this year but we're skewing it more and more towards team participation, team spirit, who's getting the most involved on Friday, who's wearing their colors, who's showing up to Friday night bar fights. So you're gonna be able to earn points for team participation. How many of you are showing up on Friday in the Friday night bar fights event? You're gonna be, uh, we'll be having a weekly team spirit award. We'll also have an individual knockout performance each week where you can earn points for your team. And that's not necessarily gonna be the best score of the week it's going to be the performance that we felt like was the most effort where someone really exceeded their potential that day with their effort in that workout and then the one we're going to be adding this year is we're going to have a weekly social media team challenge that's going to be something interactive something fun um, some things some scavenger hunts and different things we'll, we'll release those as they come but those are going to be a really fun addition this year and then you'll also have your placing each week in sugar wad that will contribute to your score. So, yeah, that's all I got. You guys have anything to add there or anything that you're ex particularly excited for on that list? Um, just save the date. Next <laughs> Five Fridays, 6 p.m. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we didn't really talk about that. Uh, logistics of when to do the workout. The workout's going to be released Thursday night. Friday, we'll have our normal classes up until 4 p.m. So 4 p.m. will be the last class you can do the open workout and you're gonna be able to do it in any of your normal class times. Five o'clock and six o'clock classes will be canceled. At six o'clock will be the Friday night bar fights event. Usually the first heat will start about 6.15 and depending on how long the workout is, how many people we have show up, 
We've had times where we're done in an hour. We've had times where it's taken two and a half to three hours. But we usually have food there, drinks there. We'll have some sponsors. So it'll be a fun event. And whether you did it that morning or whether you want to do it that evening, we'd like for everybody to come out to either do it that night or to support someone else who's doing it. For scoring, one, one thing we're going to be changing this year is having a minimum work requirement for our in-house open. So one of the things we've seen in the past is that a lot of people overextend themselves to do RX when they shouldn't just because one rep RX has always been better than one million reps scale. So this year, depending on the workout, we're gonna customize it to each workout. We're gonna release a minimum work requirement on Thursday night and Friday morning for that particular workout where if you are, an, you are an RX score that doesn't meet that minimum work requirement, then a scaled score that beats that, so let's say the minimum work requirement is one round, if you don't get one round RX and someone gets over one round scaled, they will have beaten that RX person for that workout, right? And this is just to, it won't be anything crazy, but it will be enough to deter people from just going RX just because they wanna get one rep and choosing a workout that's more appropriate for you. That's really what it's about is that people are choosing a workout that's a little bit more appropriate for them and they're gonna get a better stimulus for that day and it's a more appropriate competitive workout rather than maybe spending 15 minutes trying to get one chest to bar or one toes to bar, right? If it's something like that extreme, it's better for you to go for the scaled option of that workout and, and try to beat that minimum work requirement, which shouldn't be hard to do. Another question that we've gotten a lot recently is about travel and missing weeks. If you're gonna miss one week of the, the Open, I would still highly encourage you to sign up. It's still gonna be fun. You're still gonna be able to contribute to the team. You won't hurt the team that much. There's a lot of people that just forget to submit their score. So if you don't submit a score one week because you're away, it's not gonna be a big deal and you won't be the worst person on your team because there's gonna be a couple of people that forget to submit every week. So if you're gonna miss one, try to get in. If you're traveling, there's a lot of gyms that will host you. Just communicate to them, email them, let them know what days you're gonna be there. Ask them if you need to provide a judge or if you need to be there early at a certain time. And then you can usually do the workout there and submit your score through SugarWad. And as long as you get it in by Sunday night at midnight, you'll be you'll be good to go. So that's really all I got. You guys got anything to add? Um, yeah, I just had a question about like judging and stuff. And we're going to try to keep it as official as possible, like having people judge each other, um, have the scorecards printed from CrossFit.com. Um, and really stick to the standards like we always have done in the past. Um, so we're not, hopefully not losing anything in the judging in the workouts this year. Yeah, the quality should still be there. The standard should be held just like we do on our in-house competitions and just how we've done on the games in the past. Cool, well hopefully you guys sign up if you're not already and look forward to seeing you in the open.